You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. So, so let me ask you then, when we're thinking about as a connectivity option amongst all the other types of connectivity in the in the landscape um, for IoT, what is it? What's what about LoRaWAN has kind of allowed it to become so popular? And on top of that. Where are you seeing the biggest growth opportunities from a use case or an application perspective? Because obviously each connectivity is better suited for certain applications depending on certain parameters that are required for it to meet an ROI and to be successful. So from, from your perspective, wh- you know, where does LoRaWAN really kind of lead the way and, and what, what use cases is it really designed for in your opinion? Yeah, well, we, we always say that um... It, you know, for example, when people ask me to compare LoRaWAN to LTEM or MBIoT, you know, what, what I always respond with is that, to your point, each one of these technologies has its own strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And it's really not a matter of one or the other. It's a matter of matching the strengths to the requirements of the application and the, right. uh, uh, you know, the connectivity. So, so um, the reason LoRaWAN has become the global standard for LP WAN, low power wide area networking, is because one, it's an open standard. So, so it's a standard, first of all. Um, right. Two, it's an open standard, which means anyone sure. can build either networks or devices or applications to the standard and they know what they're, they're building to. It's consistent. Um, Three, because it's an open standard, we've now achieved from a global standpoint economies of scale in terms of device production and uh, the availability of networks. And so now we're starting to see device costs and component costs go down. Um, and it's, it's getting very inexpensive to deploy, uh, you know, uh, both devices and, and, uh, and connectivity technology, whether you want to bring your own or, or access a public network. Um, right. And the last thing I would say is because it's an open ecosystem, um, the variety of both devices and applications has become virtually unlimited, uh, sure. uh, not, not just in any one country, but in the globe. And you can source devices from pretty much anywhere in pretty much any niche application, and that's growing every day. So um, from a use case standpoint, the LoRaWAN technology is called LP WAN. It's called the Low Power Wide Area Networking, which means that it, it's really targeted end to end to primarily battery powered devices. Okay. So the entire technology is optimized end to end from a protocol and from a communication standpoint to really extend the life of the battery to you know 15 to 20 years on a you know a AA battery. And so um, the use cases that that lends it to are things that are battery po- battery powered, obviously. And I'll, I'll give you a good example. Um, one of the uh, most successful segments we have right now is in um, uh, water utility metering, mm. so AMI. Um, so we're building networks uh, literally all over the United States for utilities to um, to uh, uh, AMI enable their meters. So basically okay. to read their meters over the air and stream that data to uh, a system that allows them to make intelligent decisions, uh, detect leaks and those kinds of things. So right. we have hundreds of thousands of uh, meters under contract and obviously a water meter cannot be powered for obvious right. reasons. So it's battery powered device. These are massive infrastructure projects. So they have 20 year life. So the battery has to last for 20 years. And that's what we're getting in in that case. Um, Another example would be in gas utilities. Um, We've recently announced a a number of different initiatives in doing uh, leak detection at the meter, uh, as well as automatic shutoff if there's a leak detected. So we have LoRaWAN based uh, shutoff valves, as well as uh, uh, leak detectors that that can identify leaks. So the utility space is really an exciting space. and then um, uh, another really interesting space would be food safety, where, okay. where uh, uh, application providers are deploying a gateway in a fast food restaurant, for example, and mm. they're using that to monitor the temperature of both uh, storage areas for food, as well as uh, the temperature of food while it's being prepared, uh, and using that to also automatically produce things like uh, FDA compliance documents and things like that. Um, so that's another really interesting example. Um, you know, it, it, it's almost limited. Um, 
you know, there's, uh, uh, I'm just trying to think of another, uh, then the last example would be um, in smart buildings. Mm. Uh, so smart buildings and smart cities is another place where we're getting a lot of different uh, application tra traction. In buildings, it's environmental monitoring to smart water. We have one okay. partner who instruments everything that dispenses water, either in a stadium or in a building, as well as monitoring air quality and those kinds of things. So just that's just a, a survey uh, sure. you know, yeah, I could go out for hours about the different applications that we're implementing on our on our platform. I, I think that's um, kind of more of a testament to just the you know, why Lorwan has become so popular and kind of been the de facto when it comes to L, uh, low power wide area network technology. Um, obviously, you have things like MBIOT and LTEM and other technologies that, that are used. But, um, you know, for as long as I've been in the space, LoRa has been a, a, a leading connectivity um, technology for, for IoT. And it's, I think, all the examples you're giving. And, and if you really understand the difference between those use cases and applications, you can start to see why LoRa is such a good fit for so many different applications. So, so I appreciate you kind of shedding light on that.